Yesterday, Representative Earl Blumenauer told Congress that DEA Chief Chuck Rosenberg should be fired for calling medical cannabis a joke. What is a joke is the job Rosenberg is doing as acting DEA administrator. He's an example of the inept, misinformed zealot who has mismanaged America's failed policy of marijuana prohibition. Americans recognize it's time for a change in direction to legalize, regulate, and tax marijuana. Rosenberg claims medical marijuana is a joke. But the proven therapeutic value of cannabis has prompted 23 states, Guam and the District of Columbia, to approve its medical application, and an additional 17 states have authorized more limited use. Rosenberg's claim that more research is necessary is true, but it reeks of hypocrisy because the DEA, under his leadership, has made badly needed cannabis research difficult, often impossible. If Rosenberg were doing his job, he could have visited with some of the hundreds of thousands who have found medical marijuana has had a profound effect on their lives and that of their families. Rosenberg is clearly not the right fit for the DEA in this administration. While commending President Barack Obama for not cracking down on states with legal cannabis, the Oregon congressman expressed frustration with federal agencies' continued obstruction of pot law reform. Last month, the Department of Justice took an outrageously flawed position on the Rohrbacher Farr Amendment that passed with strong bipartisan support, which clearly specified that the federal government should interfere with state legal medical marijuana operations. The Department of Justice and the DEA contends that it only prevents action against states, not individuals. This is a ridiculous interpretation of the law and caused a federal court in California to rule it defies language and logic. More recently, the Senate passed the Milcon Appropriations Bill to allow VA doctors to recommend medical marijuana to their patients in accordance with state law. Yet, on November 13th, the Department of Veterans Affairs indicated they won't allow doctors and patients to participate, even if this bill becomes law. Sadly, the culture of opposition in the federal government continues. On one level, we have this amazing progress at the state and local level. We've made significant progress here in Congress with the introduction of over 20 bills in both chambers, and there have been successful votes on three amendments on the floor of the House and three in Senate committees in this Congress. This culture needs to change. Leadership needs to change. I would hope that the President directs the heads of all relevant agencies to adjust their policies, clarify regulations that deal with marijuana laws, establish policies that reflect changing state laws, and most important, reflect the president's own position. He has said that he has bigger fish to fry than interfere with state legislative efforts. It's time that the rest of his administration gets on board, and it should start with a new head of the Drug Enforcement Agency. Despite continued attempts by cannabis prohibitionists to defend the status quo, Change is inevitable in the U.S. 2016 Democratic presidential candidates Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton have both committed to federal cannabis law reform, with Sanders taking the more liberalized stance. Furthermore, public support for legalization keeps increasing. More states are choosing to legalize cannabis for medical or recreational purposes, and courageous members of Congress, like Blumenauer and Jared Polis from Colorado, continue pressuring the establishment to change cannabis laws.